is the Pi 5 worth buying? Uh, yes. Yes and no. Um, let me elaborate. So you're, you know, your competing objects are like the Raspberry Pi 4 or like the Raspberry Pi 400, which is like the keyboard style Raspberry Pi that, you know, you can type on, but doesn't have a trackpad for some reason. Still, still mad about that. Um, so compared to those, this is going to be more powerful, offer like a lot of upgrades, but it's still not going to be able to do some things that I really liked about the old Raspberry Pi, which is like the ability to use the wireless card for hacking. Like, why did nobody at Raspberry Pi think that, like, this device that's really popular with hackers might want to have, like, a wireless card that supports doing, like, interesting Wi-Fi stuff? I don't know. But apparently, it's a real pain in the ass to have to write these firmware drivers um, when they're closed source. So using, like, a Broadcom driver that's, like, locked down is not going to excite any hackers. There has to be an open source one introduced for it, like, was done for the Raspberry Pi with the Nextcom driver. Uh, or Nextmon, sorry, Nextmon driver, which allowed for monitor mode using the native uh, Wi-Fi card of the Raspberry Pi 4. So um, yeah, it's it's a little challenging to get super excited about it as a Wi-Fi hacker because like you're adding stuff to it now and it's like, you know, you're going to have to pick an alpha wireless network adapter and the build cost starts getting like a bit higher. So I really did like the simplicity and elegance of using the older like Raspberry Pi 3B plus. Like the, that was kind of my favorite generation because it was super applicable for most hacking tasks and didn't require many add-ons or additions to be used. That being said, it's very powerful. You'll be able to use some of the Kali tools that otherwise you would have had to just ignore or write off on a Raspberry Pi. And the fact that it supports like two monitors out, like you can really make this little guy like uh, the center of your Wi-Fi hacking or, you know, other hacking experience as you're learning. And it's still cheap enough that I feel like, um, you know, if something were to happen with it, it's not a big deal. But at this point, it's also getting into the territory of like a cheap ThinkPad when it comes to like capacity and, and all the other stuff. So the argument between a Raspberry Pi 5 and a cheap ThinkPad it's kind of difficult for me right now. I mean, for a couple hundred bucks, you can get a full feature ThinkPad that you can do a lot more than you can do on a Raspberry Pi. And you also have to consider that a lot of the peripherals with the Raspberry Pi, you know, don't come with it. When you get an older ThinkPad, you get the screen, you get the keyboard, you get the trackpad, um, and a lot of IO, uh, like battery, like charging system. You don't get that with the Raspberry Pi. So you really have to think about your use case. And my suggestion would be, if you like the older Raspberry Pis, this is a nice upgrade. Um, if you're brand new to ethical hacking and you want a Linux system to work off of that tends to be pretty well supported, then great, the Raspberry Pi community is really good. So super recommend the Raspberry Pi for all those things. Uh, but, you know, like compared to an old ThinkPad, if you're really just just getting started, I don't know if I would anymore recommend a Raspberry Pi 5 over, you know, like a, a $120 to $300 ThinkPad that you find off eBay that is relatively well-maintained and has most of the things you need.